Let's make our AIs chase us after they see you. To do this, we will need to learn about AI perception and more advanced behavior trees. If you haven't seen part one, I suggest you go back and watch it so you can set up your project the same way that this is. If you find this or any of my videos helpful, like, subscribe, and leave a comment about what you want to see next or if you have any questions. At the end of part one, we had AI-controlled NPCs that could patrol to a set place and back or have them pick random places to patrol to. It is important at this point that we understand how to troubleshoot and debug running behavior trees so that if something isn't going as planned, we can track it down and fix it. Unreal Engine 5 has many powerful ways to debug. While running the game, you can press the apostrophe key and see the debug overlay. By default, this displays what the AI controller and behavior tree is doing and the variables that it is using. You could add breakpoints to completely stop the game when the behavior tree node becomes active. While the game is running, the behavior tree details are updated if the keys are set. This is a good way to spot name typos in your blueprints. While it's not required, I have decorators on each of my tasks in the behavior tree. This is simply a safeguard in case something changes the order of events. Because of this, I can reverse the tasks and nothing changes. Let's give the NPCs some vision. In the AI NPC blueprint, we need to add an AI perception component. There are a few standard events that get used, but really, we just need any of the updated events. These get called when the NPC sees something. They are all triggered, but each return different information. Setting up the AI perception component is straightforward. The census config option chooses the sense to use. Sight, hearing, touch, etc. We will select the sight sense. You can add multiple if you want, and you can select which takes priority. I will make the dominant sense sight because it's the only one that I added. Under each sense, there are some options that we can change. We'll cover the important ones. First, I'm going to remove all but one NPC to keep the screen as uncluttered as possible. When we play and press the apostrophe key, we can change the debug information to the perception system by pressing 4. I turned off the AI and behavior tree data by pressing 1 and 2. It's kind of hard to see the screen information because the sight range is pretty big. We'll start by making it smaller. There are two ranges to concern ourselves with. The sight range, which is how far the NPC can detect something, and the lose sight range, which is how far away before it won't track the target anymore. We will set both smaller. We also want to lower the peripheral vision. The NPC shouldn't be able to see his ears. Now we can see the debug data better. The green circle is the sight radius, and the green triangle is the detection zone. The magenta circle is the range that the NPC will lose sight of the target. The NPC can only see within the triangle. Having the triangle point at his nose won't work well. It'd be like like looking through a pinhole, oblivious to anything close. We can shift the view area backwards. Better. But now we can see the back of his head. Changing the clipping radius solves this. Now the NPC has some side vision and can respond well. But he isn't responding. It's because he's not looking for the right team. We need to select all the options under Detect by Affiliation. The system is kind of dumb because you can't change the affiliations in the blueprint, only in C++. Just check them all and it will work for now. Any pawn that enters the view area is detected. You can see that the target is visible until it leaves the view area or past the magenta circle. For some reason, my printer screen decided to act up while recording. I'll be using the output log panel later. You can see that all three events are triggering and displaying the message. They trigger once the target enters the view and again when it leaves view. Here it is in debug. You can see all three running. For this project, I will use on target perception updated so that I have access to the viewed actor and view data. If you split the stimulus pin, you can see the different information provided. We will use the Boolean at the bottom. This is true when first viewing and false when leaving. We can see it working in the output log.
Let's start doing useful things now. We will get the blackboard we made before and store the actor to the target key. And for now, we will remove the target object when it loses sight of us. In the debugging, we will see it working. Let's make it more noticeable. I made a quick exclamation mark in Blender and added it to my AI NPC. Scale it down and position it over its head. Make sure it's parented under the skeletal mesh. And turn off visibility. Set it to be visible when it sees the target and off when it loses the target. Let's do more. I'm going to create a few variables to give some control about how long the NPC will continue to look for the player after it loses sight. We don't want the NPC to just give up the second eyeline breaks. Let's make a timer variable. Set it to zero when the target is lost. Make a couple booleans to keep track of if there is a target or if there was a target recently. Set them like I am so we know if we have a target or lost the target. Bring back the tick event and we'll build the timer. We only want the timer to run if we lost the target and are looking for it. Now, get the timer and add delta time and set it. We will need to compare it to a time to look. I chose 5 seconds for now. We can set the NPC booleans back and turn off the alerted mark after the time is high enough. Time to have our NPCs finally chase us. We will do this by altering the behavior tree to do a little bit more. First, we need a selector because we either want to patrol if there isn't a target or chase us if there is. This part of the tree is the no target part of the tree. Over here, we're going to move to the target. We're going to use a pre-built decorator named Blackboard. This checks a Blackboard key to see if there is data set or not. We want the patrol side of the behavior tree to only run if there isn't a variable set in the target key, and we want the chase side of the behavior tree to run if there is a variable set in the Blackboard key for target. The NPC didn't chase me. Let's find out why, let's debug. Looks like the behavior tree is still running the patrol to set point. We need to tell it to stop right then if there is a target. It also gets stuck in chase because it will try to reach me and can't finish the task unless it catches me. We need to interrupt or abort these. First, we need to tell the decorator to abort if the result changes. In our setup, it just needs to abort itself. This will affect everything that is connected below it on the branch. The color changes for all the affected nodes that can abort. Okay, it's working, but this is a chase. He needs to be faster. We could alter both patrol tasks, but our service is easier since the patrol tasks already set the walk speed. Services just run when the parent node is called. Just a simple change to the walk speed. Yeah, yeah. 
I think that we've all had enough. Keeps you up at night, yeah. Make all the now everything seems to be working correctly. Sometimes you can still get stuck in a task because it doesn't know what to do when you do abort. You can tell it what to do in the task blueprint. Here, we will just say stop immediately. Same for the other patrol tasks. We will use finish abort to tell it when it completes. I'm not a big fan of the NPC knowing where I am through walls. I'll have the NPC go to the last place he saw the player once he loses sight of it. Add a new vector location to the blackboard and set the key variable as soon as the NPC loses sight of the player. Once the timer expires, we can clear that key and head back to patrolling. Now we can either have a target and no last seen location, which means we currently see the target and could chase it, or a target and a last seen location, which means we lost sight and we should go to that location. We'll have to make sure that we clear the location if we find the player again on the way to the location. Just check if the location is set using a blackboard decorator. Once again, we have to tell them to abort if the location variable becomes set or is cleared. Now we see it chasing us, and when we get out of range, it heads to the last known place and waits a bit. One last thing, sometimes when you jump off of an edge and the NPC loses sight in midair, it can mark a place that the NPC can't currently get to. You can guard against unpredictable behavior by adding a does path exist decorator. If there isn't a path, it just skips the move and waits until the timer expires. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment about what you want to see next, or if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.